Hi, my name is Brian English, we're a platform named Hyperbytes, and this is the second part of the uh, page content module that um, we started, obviously, in the previous module. I'm really enjoying doing this module um, because it's it, it really is so exciting to see all of the things that you can do with uh, Wapler and data queries. In actual fact, this is a third run through of this particular section because every time we do it, I have another idea, something else that we can add in. And it's so easy to do, I really don't want to miss it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little bit of modification of our original database. And I'm going to do a bit of modification of our original query just so we can get absolutely the best out of this before we move on to any next stages. So the first thing I thought was that, well, we're going to need a page type because remember we discussed that basically our pages very much align with the roles. So basically a role will permit you to deal with a particular page. But within the structure that we created up now, we don't actually have any way of flagging which particular page type we, we are referring to in the database. So the very first thing that we're going to add is simply we're going to add page type. And remember our rules are a single character string, so we can just stick with that. Don't worry that this is down here at the moment. When we actually commit the changes, it will come back up to where it should be within the main table content. I also noticed that while we've got an event start, I actually forgot event end. So again, I'm just going to add event end. And if you remember, we defined that as a date time field. Two other things I want to do though, because we don't actually know who creates this initial content page here. What we need to have is a, um, a creator ID. So we know who created that page, uh, that particular bit of content. And that's that, again, that'll be an integer because we'll be linking that to the user ID. And also just for completeness and because we can, I'm also going to add a last editor ID. So that'll be the last person who edited, edited that particular piece of information as opposed to the person who created it. I think that's all of the changes we need to make there. So I'm just going to commit that change now. Um, update page data. There we are, that's commit. And you'll see those new fields have now moved up to where you would expect to find them. What are we going to do next? Well, we've got to start, now start looking at making this into a real part of the site. So I'm going to click on the admin folder here and I'm going to add a folder and we're going to call this page data. And we're going to put all of our API actions in relation to page data into this folder. And I know I originally said I'll just delete that later, but I'm not, why delete it? We've already written it. I'm going to drag that into there. I'm going to rename that and I'm going to call it get page data. So we don't need to write that right from scratch. And all I need to do now is make a couple of little tweaks to reflect the um, changes that we made. So I'm going to first of all open that query. So there's our query now. You'll see now that we have these new fields already showing within that. And because we chose to use basically all fields within the table, page content dot star, we don't actually need to manually add these back in. When we hit this save query, uh, they will be added to the query schema. What we do have now though is our create ID and our misspelled list editor ID. Um, which we now need to link through to that user's table. That's really easy to do. We're just going into our page content. We're going to add a new table. We're going to add the user and we're going to create a new instance of that user table. Um, this will be create a user, we'll call it, for want of a better name. And that will be where we link the user ID within the user's table that we've just instanced. 
with the creator ID that we have in that query. So we're now going to add last first name and last name in there. And now what we're actually going to do is we're going to create another instance of that user table. I'm going to call this editor user. I'm going to just clear all those suggestions out. This is our user ID is going to be the same as our last editor ID or last editor ID as I've mistakenly put. Let's OK that. Let's save our data there. Let's go back in now because the other thing that I haven't done is I haven't added linked this user ID. We might as well link it all up properly. So again, we're going to get another link to an instance of that user ID table. This is going to be our comment user. It's picked up the correct link there straight away. And again, we're just going to add the first name and the last name into that. Now, we will be adding conditions in here as well. But uh, for the moment, I think this is an ideal time just to look at popping up the data. I can't remember, did we? Just link manually update this data. I say our create ID is at 14 last editor ID is 14. If on your table that isn't, sorry, that would be a continuity error, but I'm pretty sure that that was right. But if, if you don't have them, just add those entries. And then I guess the big moment is now we hit that open in browser, and there we are now. We've got all of the information that we need, we think. We don't actually. There's something missing. I don't know whether you've certainly noticed that. We've got our page content. You can see our create ID and our editor ID, but we've only got first name and last name once rather than twice, which we would expect. Our images are great. We've got our link. Our comments now, we can see the first name and last name of the commenter as we can in relations. So why hasn't this one worked? Well, there's a very, very easy explanation to that. If we go back into our query and we have a look there, we just, first of all, I forgot to add them. So it sort of kills the interesting point that I was going to make, uh, first name and last name. But more to the point is that we have first name and last name twice now within this table. And what happened is it will merge those two values. So what I need to do is just alias these. Um, so I'm just going to prefix the editor with the letter E. Now, if I OK that and we fire that query up again, then you will see this time that we have indeed first name and last name. That is our creator's details, but we also have our editor's details as well. So that has just extended that query that we had earlier even further and made it a little more sophisticated. I just I suppose I want to think I've been writing database software now for longer than I care to imagine 38 years I think it would be I've been using SQL for 30 of that thereabouts um, and I'll be honest to have to sit and manually write that query that we're looking at now would be daunting I think would be the easiest way of putting it um, and it would be several hours work, possibly able, even in the day's work, to get this absolutely tweaked and perfect or how we want it. What we've been able to do with it, Wappler and that query editor and the ability to be able to create these subtables and these um, multi-links, we can actually do that in a space of five minutes in a completely visual environment. So that is pretty amazing. So, okay, we're going to go back in now after all my oozing about, I'm just totally blown away with being able to do this. What we're going to do is we're just going to go now and say that, and the page type is equal to, and if we actually create the variable I want, that would help. Because um, in, in reality, what we're going to do is we're going to be 
sending that page type a single letter to our query and we're going to be filtering that query based on that page type. So the page type needs to be equal to page type. So I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to fire up this table and see what happens now. And of course that query is empty because we haven't set the page type. But if I just manually add a parameter into that query, you'll see that sure enough recognizes that we're looking for page type L, which is what I just happened to set the demo page to and you'll see that it pulls up that record. So we're actually now all ready to start using that data query and we're able to allow us to um, create the pages that we need, the content we need, and then we can have uh, a bit of fun with the presentation and uh, we can really move through this uh, quite quickly now. So I'm just going to sign off for the moment on that and we, we'll come back in the next unit and we'll actually start building our page proper.